All right, guys, we're actually going to talk about something that's a little bit different. This might be a little bit boring to people, but actually something that people don't even consider. When you feed an animal and the size of the enclosure, when we start dealing with large pythons, large king cobras, and you're feeding them uh, very expansive sized meals, and I say expansive, that it causes their stomach to totally fill up. And then what happens within a few days of digesting that meal, they start to gas up. So as snakes start digesting, you know, the meal, they're really breaking it down. The snakes enlarge, excuse me, the snake's heart enlarges greatly. Their blood gets really thick and congealed. There's all sorts of cholesterol and, and fats and all that. But what I'm telling you is it causes a huge physiological change in the animal. It's very, very challenging for that animal to digest its food. And one thing you must consider, I have my cage, it's all set up. He just ate something big, like a king cobra just ate. One of my uh, friends brought in a ball python that had passed. She had pro uh, complications after laying her eggs. And so she passed and she wanted a recycler. So we fed that snake after it was frozen to a king cobra. It's an adult ball python. My king cobra is also large, but not really large enough where I wouldn't be concerned. So what happens is the animal eats the ball python. Within two or three days, the animal swells up huge. And uh, now you have to be worried about will the animal overheat. So it's very tough on the animal. Just imagine yourself after Thanksgiving and it's time to go play tackle football. It's that kind of thing. And this can actually kill animals. They can actually perish from overheating. They could also throw the meal up. And we see uh, pancreatitis. And Donnie, you might want to go over and show. Yeah, I'm looking at it. Okay. I think we'll want to show that animal. Uh, so this guy. Oh All right, so right, if these are the bulges you're talking about, right? Okay, so right there. So see how this is, this is literally, this animal was fed on Saturday, and we're now at Thursday. And this is a really big taxing meal. So one thing you want to really do, you want to make sure that this animal's ambient environment is not too hot. And the ambient environment is not the heated end, it's the normal, nominal area where the animal's sitting and its body temperature is getting to be that air temperature or the temperature of the outside of the cage. If that is also too warm and it has a large meal in it, what we're gonna do, we're gonna hit this critical stage because as it's digesting the meal, it's burning calories, it's breaking everything down. Remember, calories is a measurement of heat. So that is putting off heat. That's easily five degrees warmer than, uh, so if I have an animal, 85 degrees, that animal's core temperature as it's digesting could go up to 90 degrees. 90 degrees can be very taxing on an animal that is challenging. So I wanna make sure I mitigate my temperatures. So maybe a good comfortable temperature for this animal right now is about 82 Fahrenheit room temperature. So make sure one thing, if the cage isn't big enough and you have a heated end and you have cool end, you need to make sure that the cool end is large enough to actually allow the animal to visit that area. It's not impacting the core body temperature of that animal as it's breaking things down. This might not sound very uh, interesting or whatever, but you got a big python. You feed it like a large item, like a large rat. So if it's, let's, let's say it's a four and a half foot boa and you feed it a large rat, then you watch that snake. Oh my God, wow, it didn't really look that big two days later. And, you know, the rat only looked one size. And all of a sudden, that can get a third larger easily. And now it's going to expand. The animal's going to start gassing up. And you don't want to touch that animal. You also don't want to overheat that animal. And you don't want to make it too cold. If it's too cold, the animal can't digest its food. And you get something called pancreatitis. And that is where all the enzymes and all the digestive fluids are not enough to break down that bolus food item to uh, its normal components of digestion. And what happens is uh, the fats and everything like that are very, very difficult with all the proteins and all that. Very, very difficult to break down. And if the animal's not warm enough, its GI tract, its gastrointestinal system, is not uh, keyed up. It's not geared up because it doesn't have the proper uh, temperature to initiate uh, proper digestion. So these things are really very, very important. Might be boring to some of you, but many people don't actually realize what's going on. And this is really key because you could easily kill an animal if you didn't understand the components or the aspects of what I'm talking about. So, so what you're saying is if this situation, okay, so if we had this situation, it was in a smaller enclosure and it was to heat up really fast, this could be really bad. Yes, animal, okay, right? so, so one thing. So this animal came out of the six-foot cage and now we're putting it in these big eight-foot cages. 
and I've been waiting to kind of grow out my King Cobras, but you know, having bigger cages, so the animal has less impact on the cage. If I have a six foot cage, think about this. We're keeping these animals in big boxes, and the boxes have ventilation and whatnot, but if I give that animal uh, a big meal and it starts heating up, even if I shut the heat off, that animal becomes a thermal generator. So it's actually gonna start generating heat and it's gonna start heating the whole cage up. And technically, if, if the ambient temperature was a little too warm maybe, and then the animal's heating it up, it could actually get the animal, so the overall cage is too hot, the animal can't escape it, and guess what they do? They throw up. When they throw up, you can get all sorts of micro tears, you get all the stomach acids up in the animal's esophagus. It's, you know, obviously when we're throwing up and we're like, this is the worst thing ever, and we're, we sometimes burn our esophagus, and uh, it's, it's a very uncomfortable thing. It's, it's very uh, challenging to your, your GI because you get all these little micro ulcerations from the stomach acid. Uh, but if you have a very large uh, food item, you can actually cause these little tears. And technically, a tear in the stomach or any part of the gastrointestinal lining can actually spell disaster. It can actually kill the animal and it's a very, very hard thing to correct. So you always wanna be you know, careful. So a bigger cage like this, this guy is very comfortable. Um, hi, buddy. I know, I'll go open your other. Oh, yeah, yeah. So he, he won't even wanna come out and do, he gets usually very excited. He's actually going into a shed now. Um, he's fucking getting excited. He's, <laughs> but he, he won't do much, he doesn't, he doesn't even want to move that, and obviously this would be the time never, ever handle this snake. Let's look at this. You see that right there? That is maxed out. Really maxed out. So if I see him... Now you're saying that because he's all gassed out? Yeah, so he's, he's got a big ball python right there. And I just want to be very, very uh, aware of his discomfort because it's been, you know, it's been days days later and you should have seen him a couple of days ago it was unbelievable because this is a good sized female ball python yeah and uh next time kevin will feed that ball python in front of us guys we we actually it, it, it there was, you know what the problem was there was too many people in here i, I was feeding some moon vipers yeah. there's a lot of people in here and you guys wouldn't want to hear what they were saying because okay. it was like adults Telling little kids about poisonous snakes and oh, all. We I, should record that. That's no, I, I, that's, that's more. Well, that that happens all the time. Oh, see, son, that's that's poisonous. I'm like, well, it's poisonous if you actually eat it. It's venomous, actually, were to get bitten. And obviously, getting bitten by a cobra is devastating. Horrible. Hex armor gloves, venom gear, uh, tools, blah blah blah. Just it's just not worth it, guys. But uh, you know, respect this stuff. But look at this. This is this is awesome. So to some degree, this hex armor glove makes me uh, uh, safe from the fangs. And uh, you want to respect these. So I almost think about it like you know, it's almost like chain mail, or what they're doing with like shark bites and stuff like that. But lots of Kevlar and everything like that. But that protects me from the fangs. But we could actually easily take one of our fake hands, heat it up, show you, introduce that to a bunch of different venomous animals. I really love to socialize my animals, and socialization means that the animal learns to trust you, recognizes you not as a threat, as something in its environment, and in many cases, they actually look forward to being interacted with because animals are naturally, these, these reptiles are very, very curious, and we all know that they, uh, they can really enjoy coming out, being handled, touching them. I'm a firm believer in touching these animals, tactile interactions with these animals allows uh, a stronger bond that you actually have with these animals. And if you're foolish and you don't think these animals are that smart, you're crazy because every day I'm learning more and more from these animals. And I bet a lot of you people out there with your pet ball pythons, bearded dragons, you also realize how smart they are. The average person that doesn't keep reptiles actually thinks that they're mindless idiots and they're not. Yeah. Okay, good. Good. We're going to be seeing you guys if you're going to Animal Con in like 15 days maybe. Yes, I would absolutely encourage everybody to go to Animal Con. This is where you get to go meet. There's like 140 something uh, content creators for YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, whatever. But you get to actually meet these people. Maybe many people that you don't know, don't know anything about, myself included. You don't know about them. You go meet them. And you're like, wow, 
that person's a heck of a guy, heck of a girl, whatever. And you get to meet them. And of course, you're also showing support for idiots like me. And we're probably going to do karaoke with Kevin. Kevin's going to be up there and sing. It's all his... death metal, though. I'm a thrash metal No, we're going to do, uh, we're going to do, like, Actually, I have a really cool high falsetto songs. voice, too. Yeah? yeah. We're going to just do all the good ones. All the in sync. But it would voice. be great to actually see you guys there. Make sure you bring rotted fruit. Yes. Tomatoes. Yes. Eggs. Throw them at me. Yeah. Yeah. But I might chase you down and do bad things to you. AnimalConUSA.com. AnimalConUSA.com. Be there, guys. All right. Good. I got to turn my camera on, dude. You didn't turn your camera on.